Looking back, it was such a beautiful experience. Although they're poor, the Ni Vanuatu have more than the average person. We met the people from Ambrit, the Isle of Black Magic. There we relearn the value of traditions that have been around since time immemorial. Now we're off again. We're heading back to Vanuatu in the South Pacific in search of an island hidden away out of sight. We're going to discover the secrets of Raw Island. To get to Vanuatu, we cross the equator. Then we travel by plane from Auckland in New Zealand to the capital city of Vanuatu, Port Vila. Then to get to the secret island, I left Espiritu, Santo and headed toward the island of Motulava. Vanuatu is an island nation. It is made up of a cluster of various sizes of islands in the South Pacific. Motulava is one of the smaller of the Banks Islands. This plane fits 13 people total. Like a local shuttle, it's the connection between the Vanuatu Islands. On Motulava, the plane comes three times a week. Plain day is like a day at the market. <laughs> Could some of these people be here simply to people watch? Just to see who has arrived. The entire village is here at the airport to greet the plane. Like a lone station in the countryside, the sight of the airport is comforting. The plane takes off, leaving me by myself at an unfamiliar airport in a strange land. Motolava is a small island, and the domestic terminal is very simple. There's even a small restaurant with an assortment of food. Now you don't live in Santo now. We look to see what was on offer. There was corn and banana pie looked pretty tasty. Banana come from Vietnam. So we like call them Vietnam banana. Motalaba banana. No, no sign. Oh, no sign. No sign. No sign. You eating restaurant? Yeah. yeah. Ah. Sugar cane. Sugar cane. Ah. Sugar cane. Yeah. Mmm. Momo, huh? Mmm. <laughs> 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 Is this a restaurant? Yeah. No. So what do you have? Uh, rice and fried fish and sauce, small sauce. Small sauce. Okay. Only one menu, no more. One menu, no more. Oh. Yes. <laughs> one restaurant, one menu. Yeah. And uh, one airport building. <laughs> yeah. Everything, one, one, yes. one. Yes. <laughs> Amy sweet, nice. Amy sweet? Yes. Ah. You can, you can we tasted them before, no? Why? Wash the four yuka kai. Mmm. Toti blehema leches. Ah. Kakai now. Yes. Ema now toti blehem. Toti. Yes. And then? After. Mmm. Mmm. 
복숭아? 맛있어? 응. Now we go. So, where's the truck? Here, truck. No truck. No two truck here. Yes, trucks, all the trucks are dead. There's no spare part. Because I have to pay that, that truck, but now it's no more. No more money to pay spare part. So what happened? Tourists come like me. Tourists come like you. Uh, there's only one way to travel by boat. By boat. There's only by boat to travel down to the sea and. Inaulina Rosa so Namulen Now it seems I'm becoming just like the Nee Vanuatu. If there's no car, then I'll walk. Sure enough, I'll find the road. The smell of the air lingers at the tip of my nose. The sound of the grass brushing against my feet. What has been keeping me so busy all this time? Had we traveled this road by car, we would have missed out on the beauty we're witnessing now. Now we take this boat to the outermost part of Motolava to get to an island called Ra. Vanuatu is made up of many desert islands. The islands full of secrets excite this explorer. <laughs> For those who wander the South Pacific in search of remote locations, most islands here are like home. Mr. Yang, a raw island native, comes to greet me like an old friend. Oh, my boy. Oh, you, you, my, my, my boy, you, my boy. <laughs> oh, Yang Xi. <laughs> With each island visit, I'm greeted so warmly by my friends. Uh, Well-known man in uh, Motelava, everybody knows uh, this man, Simon. Good. So he's very familiar. When he arrived in uh, Port the airport today, people call me, Sir Simon's arrived, so I get the information from the airport. <laughs> but he never called me that he's coming. That's a bad thing for him. <laughs> <laughs> Like baby whales who stick close to their mothers, Raw Island calls Motolava its mother. Raw is not only the island's name, but it's also the village name. Like mothers everywhere who cannot stand to be idle, the women here are hard at work. Kaba is a primary source of income for this village. An innocent woman working hard to make a day's wage can also be seen here in this small village in the South Pacific. On Vanuatu, the most prized possession for the villagers is the pig. If a pig were to be nicknamed for what it ate, 
then the pigs on Ra Island should be called coconut pigs, since they're fed on coconut. As there is an abundance of top-grade coconuts all over the island, the pigs here are fed like royalty. This one, if you like to get it, it costs 50,000 baht too. Ooh. Yes. The same price as a, the cow. Cow. Same price. More value than cow. Mm. That's how valuable the pigs are here. Like the neighborhood cat or dog, a baby pig takes a little stroll in the village. Due to its high value, the villagers pour their love into the pig. It's as if the pig were a son or daughter. For a long time, the pig has had a special place in the hearts of the Ni Vanuatu. To become the village chief, you must sacrifice a pig. Pigs are also used in sacred religious ceremonies. They represent wealth and power for the Ni Vanuatu. There's something interesting in the village. Pluck one, palm tree. Palm tree? Yes. Uh, it's only up in the mountain, you can see palm tree up in the mountain. Though the peoples of the earth may live different lives, we're all the same if you look closely. At the entrance of the village, the villagers are cutting down a tree to make a guardian totem pole. John, a skilled sculptor, is working on a palm tree to make something special. Now that I look around, there's one at every house. What was once a tree is now a totem pole. The things people wish for are nothing out of the ordinary. They wish for many offspring. Or they wish for a good farming season. They pour their hearts into their poles. Like praying to the gods of the sun and moon, they raise their totem poles. Because the palm wood is so soft, two totem poles are quickly completed. Now we just have to find the right spot to put them in. Now all finished? Yeah. Yes, yeah. One more, bro. Shoot, shoot it. He, 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 he stay high, he's his life. His, uh, life. Life. What else could we possibly have to do? While the poles are being made, in one corner of the village, Bob, a village resident, is making a bow and arrow. Some kind of special energy is poured into them. The arrow is placed in the bow and his feet move carefully so as not to disturb anything around him. Bob shoots the arrow directly into the eye of the spirit. With the same arrow, he attacks and stabs the pole. 
He repeats the same thing with the other spirit poles. This place is unlike any place in modern civilization where you can communicate with others with a click of a button. There's chaos in the village. The villagers are trying to catch a chicken for me. But even a few strong men cannot catch one little chicken. It's finally caught. People gather beneath a shady tree to escape from the heat of the sun. There's no reason to feel rushed as time passes. All that's left behind as the waves crash upon the shore are the beauty of nature and the picturesque lives of these pure people. On this vast but cramped earth, it suddenly seems rather shabby to be so concerned with minutes and seconds. Chicken dishes are only served on the rare occasion that a visitor arrives on the island. Boiled chicken from the South Pacific. If I were to exaggerate a bit, it tastes like home cooking. Delicacies from around the world have nothing on this meal served in an obscure location far from home. I got a little slice of heaven here on Raw Island, a place hidden by the sea. We had a little vomit, uh, sorry, a helmet crap, uh. just to put on uh, the mat. Uh. This is the traditional method the islanders have used since long ago to catch fish. Right. Okay. That's a good one. Too bad. I wondered how mud was going to be used to make fish bait. But there was one more thing that we need. Wait, wait. It's a homemade crop. recipe. Yeah. Ah, so you just use that one smell? Yeah. Ah. So this is how we do it. Fish to come and smell it and this. Ah, and then you cut this one. That's ah. right. Yeah. I'm strong. They are already fishing there. Yeah. Ah. That's the place. We do the fishing yeah, over there. So we're going and doing fishing. Okay. I followed him dubious. The current was getting stronger. I wondered if there were any blind fish. This is how we 
You have to see it to believe it, but once you throw the line with the mud bait into the water, the fish come running. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> These people are definitely blessed. Uh, sometimes we get 50, uh, hundreds. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's depend on the mark. So ca catch ten, fish ten. all day? Ten. Uh, ten? Ten, ten fish from a from grandfather uh -huh. and then from my father and to me uh -huh. and we hope from the other generation uh -huh. they coming after us they, they'll do the same thing. So, all these uh, kids they know how to fish with this man. Ah, really? Yeah. yeah. When it seems like there's no way to do something, the Ni Vanuatu look to nature for the answer. The people here are happy and wish for nothing more. Of all the things that have been passed down from generation to generation, this is just one part of the accumulated wisdom. We moved on to a secret spot. As its name suggests, Big Stone is one large rock. It's the sacred place where the ancestors of Raw Island originated. But on this lonely stone island, a bird is curiously flying about. The villagers agreed that was a good omen. But how did it fly all the way here? The water between the two islands rises and falls. The waters go in and out, as if drawing Raw Island and Big Stone closer together, then pulling them apart again. Big Stone has become one with the people, as they can always see it from a distance. The legends told by the people who traveled to Big Stone thousands of years ago have lived on, unfazed by the passage of the millennia. David has discovered something. Whoa. It's a strange looking sea snake with white stripes. Generally, reptiles have difficulty surviving in saltwater environments. But this sea crate has no trouble breathing and living in the salty ocean. It has a special connection to the raw villagers. This, this snake come from stone, big stone. stone. The big come stone. from the big stone. Yes, the big stone. Uh. That's their home. Yes. Big stone is the home. Yes, big stone is their home. home. Yeah. If you look at this, it's like a snake. 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 You come to make up, same color as the snake. Yes. And then you dance. Yeah, same color. Same color. Just as each country has its own legends and stories to tell, 
The people of Raw Island believe that these sea crates are their ancestors in the form of reptiles. They eat fish. Uh... This is the secret place. Holy practices take place in this secret spot. It has never been revealed to any outsider in the past. The villagers of Raw Island have reenacted their snake dance, filled with historical meaning, down through the ages. But the way they prepare themselves with costumes and makeup has never been shown to anyone before. First, black charcoal paste is rubbed all over the body. Even the children are serious during this sacred ritual. They know exactly what to do and help each other. They have participated in these types of ceremonies from a young age. Stripes are painted over the charcoal with the coral mixture. Now they have become sea snakes. And then come here. Oh, the snake, sea snake, that uh, there's a little tiny island there, which is now called Ra. I want you to go to the big stone there. In primitive times, the arts first came from the human body. When the body is painted, the weak human body is protected. It's one of the ceremonies that give the body strength. This is this is uh -uh. Hmm? This one is uh um, like to get. You try pick this one. Uh -huh. I hear, ah. Yeah. Peak. Yeah. Peak to touch. Peak touch. That's a peak. With every ceremony, sacrificial offerings are a necessity. A distinctive design is seen on a bamboo tree. There is a meaning behind everything seen and done. See snake comes up and eat. Ah, okay. And this and one, you know, this one, chicken. it's a chicken's feathers. Mm -hmm. So the snake usually wants to eat chicken. Ah, snake like a chicken. Yes. So the snake comes up and said, "Okay, I will give uh, my food mm. and my meat, so that they, they can dance with." I want to participate in the snake dance too. <laughs> this is a sacred ritual passed down from father to son. Yes, my son. Huh? Yes. Your son? It's my son. Uh -huh. This is the most important lesson they teach. Finally, the secret of Raw Island. The snake dance is about to begin. For this ancient people, this dance is a sort of memorial ceremony. They believe this sea snake, one that represents fertility, is their ancestor. They dance to turn their deepest wishes into prayers.
the snake spirit is called forth. The snakes that came afar from the big stone dance a spectacular dance, and the, and the human and colorblind become one. The dancing children look different from the adults. They each hold a leaf inside their mouths. This is a promise that the children will pass on the ritual generation after generation and keep it secret from others. It represents their silence. Nature is the ruler in this land. In it, man's thanks and prayers are like the yin and yang that move around in alternation. Now it's time to send the snake spirit back home. On the mysterious island of Ra, we met a people with a secret. Have we ever had a moment in our lives as caring and earnest as they? The once forgotten dialogue between nature and man is realized once again. <laughs>